What's up, everybody? Welcome to Lunatic Froggy. It's your girl, Lunatic Froggy. Um, today we're going to be discussing multiple sclerosis, how it affects the body, and I will have some stories about when I was a child and how my mom's multiple sclerosis not only affected her, it affected the family. Um, please make sure you follow watch this video fully as you never know multiple sclerosis might affect some, you or somebody in your family okay so we're going to look at john hopkins um medicine who does a really good overview of what multiple sclerosis is um, multiple sclerosis MS is a long lasting chronic disease of the central nervous system. It is thought to be an autoimmune disorder, a condition in which the body attacks itself by mistake. MS is an unpredictable disease that affects people differently. Some people with MS may have mild symptoms. Others may lose their ability to see clearly, write, speak, or walk when communication between the brain and other parts of the body become disrupted. Malin is a prote protein and fatty substance that surrounds uh, and protects nerve fibers in multiple sclerosis. The immune system attacks the mainly, which becomes destroyed in many areas. The loss of the mainline forms a scar tissue called sclerosis. There, these are also called plaques or lesions. When the nerves are damaged in this way, they can't conduct electrical impulses normally to and from the brain. When MS causes repeated attacks, it's called relapsing remitted, remitting MS. When the symptoms progress over time without clear attacks, it's called primary progressive MS. What causes multiple sclerosis? There are many possible causes of MS, such as an autoimmune disorder, infectious agents such as a virus, environmental factors, and genetic factors. What are symptoms of multiple sclerosis? The symptoms of multiple sclerosis are often unpredictable. They may be mild to severe, short term or long term. They may appear in different combinations depending on the area of the nervous system affected. They, the following are the most common symptoms of MS, but each person may have different symptoms. The first symptom is blurred or double vision. My mother has blurred vision or double vision. She not blurred. She has double vision in both eyes, different directions. And when we get to the end of this, I'll explain what I mean by that. Uh, Renegade green, green cor color distortion, pain or loss of vision because of swelling in the optic nerve, trouble walking and difficulty with balance, abnormal feelings such as numbness, prickling and pain, or pins and needles. Other symptoms of multiple sclerosis, muscle weakness in the arms and legs, trouble with coordination, you basically you have problems walking, standing, you get off-sided easily. Uh, spasticity the involuntary increased tone of muscles leading to stiffness or spasms basically muscle spasms fatigue this may be brought on by physical activity but it may ease with rest you may have consistent tiredness, tiredness that doesn't go away Loss of feeling, speech problems, tremor, dizziness, hearing loss, ball and bladder problems, depression, changing in sexual functions, 
about half of all the people with MS have thinking con congenitive problems linked to the disease. These affect focusing attention, memory, and poor judgment. So, as you see here, we have a list of primary, secondary, and territory. I'm going to read each one all the way down. Um, the first are the primary. These symptoms are direct result of the destruction of Maylene. Secondary, they are the complications that may occur as a result of the primary symptoms, for example. And then you have the territory, which are the social job related and psychological problems. So the primary symptoms are weakness, numbness, shaking, loss of vision, pain, paralysis, loss of balance, and bladder and ball problems. The secondary are paralysis can lead to bed sores. That ain't paralysis. That's perilous. Sorry, my bad. Perilous, which is paralyzation. Bladder problems may cause repetitive urinary traction infections. Um, inactivity can result in weakness, poor posture, muscle imbalance, decreased bone density, and breathing problems. Becoming less mobile becomes because of weakness and trouble swallowing can lead to greater risk of pneumonia. Now you get into where it affects your social job related and psychological problems. A person who becomes unable to walk or drive may lose their livelihood. Strain of dealing with a chronic illness may disrupt personal relationships and depression is often seen among people with MS. Um, the way it's diagnosed is they basically have to go in and do a CT, but you have to show signs of two attacks in at least a month or, you know, that you have these symptoms. If you have the symptoms, they have to do a, um, CT but they're also going to do a mental function, emotional function, language function, movement and coordination, vision, balance, and function of the five senses. Um, once again, they're going to go in and do an MRI um, or CT, evoke potentials. They're going to do a spinal tap. They're going to do blood tests and an eye exam. The only way really to treat multiple sclerosis um, it says treatment will depend on your symptoms, age, disease modifying treatments, medication, and treatment of acute relapses. So there is no known cure for it. You can't just take a medication for 10 days and you're good. Um, Treatments for the condition seen with multiple sclerosis may include medications, um, basically muscle relaxers, and I think there's a, co a couple other ones that my mom takes to help ease the symptoms of it. Equipment such as canes, braces, and walkers, rehabilitation, reha um, physical rehabilitation, and that works really good. My mom has to go in for every time she gets nerve, the nerves in her neck burnt. She has to go in for rehabilitation for six weeks. Um, and she does that twice a year. So rehab varies depending on your symptoms, how bad they are. MS rehab may help you to get back functions that are important for daily living. Be as independent as you 
can involve your family so they can understand what you're going through, make the right decisions relating to your care, learn about the equipment like canes, braces, walkers that can make your life easier to move around, set up an exercise program that builds muscle strength, endurance, and control, get back it will help you get back motor skills or it can help you i'm not going to say it will um speak more easily if you have a weakness or lack of coordination of the face and tongue muscles manage ball and bladder inconsistence uh relearn thinking skills change the way your home is set up to keep you safe but allow you to move about as easily as possible. Basically, make sure that there is nothing in the middle of the floor so you can walk from room to room to room. Um, the complications of MS range from mild to severe. They can range from fatigue to the inability to walk. Other problems include loss of vision, balance, ball, and bladder control. Depression can result from the difficulty of living with a chronic condition. Now, that does not just go for multiple sclerosis. That goes for things along the lines of fibromyalgia. Um, and basically, anything that causes you to be sick or not be where you used to be can and will cause depression because you always feel like you're failing at life and then if you think you fail other people it, it's just a whole thing and I will do a video on depression Key points about multiple sclerosis is a chronic disease of the central nervous system. MS is unpredictable. Some people may have only mild effects and some people lose the ability to see clearly, write, speak, or walk. Early symptoms can include vision problems, trouble walking, and tingling feelings. MS affects people differently but co common problems are trouble with movement and thinking and ball and bladder medicine and rehabilitation can help keep to keep and restore function now that's coming from the john hopkins now if you look at the screen there what this is showing is basically your typical nerve Exposed fire fiber and then the nerves affected by multiple sclerosis. So as you see, there's like nothing wrong here, but then like this one, it's missing a whole bunch. That's what they're calling as um, exposed fibers, and that's where no nerve receptors cannot translate what they need to translate. Now, if you go into the Mayo Clinic, multiple, it, they state multiple sclerosis is a potentially disabling disease of the brain and spinal cord. In MS, the immune system attacks a protective sheath, myelin, which we've discussed in the John Hopkins, um, but they have pretty little diagrams of what it is. Um, common symptoms, numbness or weakness in one or more limbs that typically occur on one side of your body at a time. So, like, fibromyalgia is, like, your whole body. Multiple sclerosis is, like, your left side's hurting today or your right side's hurting. I, I'm guessing. Uh, tingling, electric shock shock sensation that occurs with certain neck movements especially bending the neck forward so looking down it really affects you um lack of coordination unsteady gait or the inability to walk partial or complete loss of vision usually in one eye at a time often with pain during eye movement Prolonged double vision, blurry vision, vertigo, problems with sex, ball, or bladder functions, 
fatigue, slurred speech, con congenitive problems, mood disorders. Uh, this shows that at least 20% to 40% of the people with relapsing MS can eventually develop a steady progress of symptoms with or without periods of remission within 10 to 20 years from the disease onset. This is known as secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Um, small increases to the body temperature can temporarily worsen the signs of multiple sclerosis. There aren't any considered true disease relapse, but um, I'm not reading that word. You can read that word. Um, most people with multiple sclerosis have has a relapsing, remitting to disease course. They experience periods of new symptoms or relapse that develop over days or weeks and usually improve partially or completely. These relapses are followed by quiet periods of the disease remission that can last months or even years. So basically they have symptoms, but then like some of it stops and they don't have those symptoms and then it comes back and then it just that would really suck. The worsening of symptoms usually include problems with mobility and gait. The rate of the disease progression varies gently, greatly among people with secondary progressive MS. Some people with MS experience a gradual onset and steady progression of signs and symptoms without any relapse known as primary progressive MS. Um, it goes into risk factors, age, sex, family history, certain infections, race. Now, this ain't like, oh my God, this race or that race, but white people, particularly with those of the nor Northern European descendants are at higher risk, climate, uh, anybody from Canada, you know, the northern part of the United States have a higher for uh, northern United States, New Zealand, southeastern Australia, and Europe. Uh, your birth month also plays into it because of the lack of vitamin D your mom got while you were pregnant. Um, your genes, obesity, certain immune disorders, smoking. Um, complications, people with multiple sclerosis may also develop mu muscle, yeah, muscle stif stiffness or spasms, severe weakness or paralysis, paralysis, basically you get paralyzed, typical in the legs, problem with bladder or ball or sexual functions, Congenitive problems like forgetfulness and word finding difficulty. Um, mood problems such as depression, anxiety, and mood sing swings and seizures, even though it's very rare. And that's coming from the Mayo Clinic. There was nothing else there to show you. Um, so, yeah, it, multiple sclerosis is a very, dis very bad disease. Um, Montel Williams, I believe it was Montel Williams, he had multiple sclerosis. Okay, so yes, Montel Williams had multiple sclerosis. Now, coming from someone whose mother suffers with multiple sclerosis, it is a very hard disease to deal with. Not... Because of the simple fact that, like, you never know the symptoms, but because, A, it's such a hard disease to get diagnosed. Like, they got to do the MRI to show that there's been damages to the nerve opticals. They have to go through and determine that there was no other cause for this. 
Um, but also because of the simple fact that you had to watch out for your parents. Now, my mom, as I explained, she has double vision. She sees up and down, and then she sees left and right. So she has double vision in both eyes and sees four. So if she's looking at, let's say, this credit card, right? She would see four of them. She would see four cell phones. And that's where being the lack of coordination really takes effect because, well, I see four cell phones. Where am I grabbing? Well, so she learned how to like almost cross her eyes so that the four come into one. Don't ask me how she did it. She did it. She could pass a drug, a driving test, no issues. Um, she fights every day to stay out of a wheelchair. She walks with a cane. Her muscle spasms are getting worse. She's constantly got tremors. It's one of the worst diagnoses you could get it is a very scary disease i know a lot of people that would rather have what i have which is fibromyalgia or lupus compared to multiple sclerosis because not only does it deteriorate your nerves it deteriorates your brain as you've seen lack of eye hand coordination cognitive thinking goes in with multiple sclerosis and that's very scary to think that at some point in time you're not going to be able to do these things and to anybody that is suffering with multiple sclerosis and continues to fight to make a better life for themselves. I applaud you 100%. You are the fucking MVP. Because to live with a disease so crippling. Is truly outstanding. And that includes my mother. I applaud you mother. You are truly an amazing woman. As you all know, you see her every other Tuesday. Um, but part of the, another reason that it's hard to live with and be in a relationship with someone that does have it is, again, the lack of feeling. My mom can put her hand on a hot stove like the coils red hot put her hand down and not know it and matter of fact she's done it she was cooking she was talking not fully thinking she put her hand down she wasn't paying attention to where she put her hand down and she put her hand down on the coils of the stove and burnt her hand Greg immediately went into action and pulled her off. Of the stove. Well, her hand off of the stove. But again, she don't feel nothing. So imagine you're cooking or, you know, anything that you have to have feeling with. And you can't feel it. There's nothing there. You could hurt yourself and not feel it. Now, I know Texas, the bottom part of Texas, could get to like a hundred and some degrees. And that's on a cold day in June, okay? To 
walk outside barefoot, you could burn the bottom of your feet. You take somebody with multiple sclerosis, they're going to walk out there barefoot because they can't feel it. They're going to go check the mail or whatever. They're going to come back in. Their feet are going to be burnt and they're not going to feel it. There's Those no nerve receptor receptacles are gone. They're not going to feel it. So now, let's say they live alone. Guess what? Homie don't know it. Homie continues to live life on a daily basis like they normally do. Oh, shit. Their feet are infected. Again, they're not going to know it until somebody points it out, which is a very huge issue because, like, you're not, unless you're, like, looking at your feet on a daily basis. And some people do not. And that's where I'm going. Some people do not look at their feet, the bottom of their feet on a daily basis. Now, let's say you are paralyzed or semi-paralyzed from the waist down. Again, you cut the bottom of your foot. You're not going to look at the bottom of your foot because really... It's hard to. So, again, you could get a lesion. Um, put your hand down. And you put your hand on glass. You're not going to feel it. But you could hurt the... Well, you ain't got nerve receptors. But you could hurt the tendons in your fingers. You could hurt... You could break bones and not feel it. All of these things are very important to a daily living. There is actually a person out there. There are people out there that have no feeling whatsoever. Like they break a bone, they're not going to feel it. They're hungry and they're not going to feel it. Um, they just have absolutely no feeling in their whole entire body. And... Like they say, that is one of the most dangerous things because let's say you fall down the stairs, you get back up because, hey, I'm fine. Here, you broke your arm and you didn't even know it. But that's a whole different disease. I'll have to figure, I'll remember what that disease is. But I wanted to inform you guys on what multiple sclerosis is because I live with some well, I don't live with, I am in a relationship, aka my mom, it is a mother-daughter relationship with somebody who has multiple sclerosis, and I want to get the word out about multiple sclerosis. So with that being said, I love you, and I hope you all have an amazing day. Love you all. Bye!